Let's talk now about science. Anybody that's been around Sunlight for the last few years knows that we've been updating our elementary science programs and E is up next. So what changes are we making to Sunlight Science Level E? Yeah, this year we're, we are changing some of the books and we're changing the experiments mostly. It's still, our science program still follows the same format. We still have a great group of literature that you read. You still do. I have brought a sample of the instructor's guide. I printed off one. So you still have your, your schedule to follow. We have notes for all of the books that you're reading. We also have those do togethers. People can do the simple little activities to kind of explore the topic more, or just think about it more broadly. Here are the answer keys. We have the, we still have the, these colorful activity sheets that you can, your child can do. It kind of shows if they're paying attention to the, to the books and can answer questions. It really solidifies the concepts that they're reading about as well. So we have these just beautiful, colorful activity sheets that they can do. And we also still have the answer keys so that you have the answers and don't have to read everything if you don't want to. So our instructor's guide is still the same, just so useful for science, I think. But for Science E, some of our um, new books, we're using some old books. They've moved around a little bit. So I think people are familiar with listening to, to crickets. This is the story about Rachel Carlson. Each each level does have a scientist that we study. And so you learn about somebody doing science. And so that's her for this year. We have uh, this book about water. I believe that we've had it before in another level. And so we've added it to this level. This is talking this year, sorry, kind of our um, main concepts that you're learning about this year in Science E is physical science and particles, and then energy and ecosystems and earth and space. And so this is a part of the physical science where you learn about matter. Um, you learn about water. You learn about the particles that are really small. You also learn about how uh, water flows through the ecosystem. So this is a really great one to just, just tons of like beautiful pictures uh, that you can, your kids will just pour over, I think. Another one about earth and space. We talk, we do the Osborne astronomy in space. This one talks about the planets and different, just different facts about the different planets. Here's Neptune, those kinds of things. In our experiments, we'll talk about like gravitational forces in space. You'll just, you'll talk about how stars have different brightnesses because they're different distances away from the earth. And so you see the different brightnesses. They might be the same, but because one is far away and one is a bit closer, they have different brightnesses, those kinds of things. We talk about constellations. This shows the constellations. You'll be able to see those in the night sky. And we'll do experiments about how those change over the year, um, throughout the year. So you see different constellations at different types of times of the year. And so there's actually an experiment where you're working with the constellations and seeing how your perspective changes depending on the year. So just a lot of cool things there. And then there's an engineering design component as well. And so your student will do, um, this is how to be a good science, good at science. And so this talks about the scientific principles and how you can go through an experiment and how you can know things are true. This is talks about how you do science and those kinds of things. So in engineering design, we'll do activities of uh, creating a prototype and then improving on it. Like what kinds of things can you change so that it'll work better? And just that continual improvement process, iterations of things. And so you'll you'll start with one kind of design and you'll have to improve on it. You'll also have to, uh, in one of the experiments, you have a situation and you're, you're faced with a problem and then you have to create different prototypes to say, which, which might work. And then you have constraints to put on that. So, okay, I can't, I don't have these kinds of materials available. What can I do with the ones that I do have available and those kinds of things. So, a lot of that is teaching you how to be a good scientist, how to look at the world around you and know what it's made of and those kinds of things. Here's the fifth day book. If you if you get the fifth day, pro, five day program, um, how things work. So you get to look at the inside of things and like <laughs> how they're built and how they're put together. Here's like a, a hoverboard or like a hover bike and how they put that together. Here's how light works and how it's built up of uh, several different colors, how uh, vibrations and those kinds of things. So 
there's some really great books in, in Science E that I'm excited to share with you and all the new experiments that you get to do. The experiments, there's a supply kit that will come with most of the items you need to, to do the experiments. There might be a few household items you need to add, but um, the supply kit is a, a wonderful starting point so that you're not searching for everything at the hardware store and the, all of those places. So. Yeah, I think the experiments, you bringing up the kit, that's the kit allows you to do the experiment. If you're not somebody that is going to go track everything down, I know in our house, if we had to track them all down, would be less likely to do the experiment. But I love what you said, the kit includes everything that or most things that you're going to need that you don't already have. And then you mentioned too, how the experiments tie into the literature. I think that's something that people don't always think about like am i just doing random experiments or is it the what you're reading in the literature is that foundational for what you're doing in the experiments can you talk a little bit more how do we decide what experiments we're going to do or how do we make sure that they do tie in with the literature piece we do try often to tie them into the literature. We want students to read about something and then to be able to explore it. You know, that's uh, often how people learn is reading about it, but also doing it. And so we, we try really hard to tie those into what the students are reading about. We also have a couple experiments that we just think students of that age need to explore. And so there might be a topic or two that don't tie directly to the reading, but they're just really good for that age range or that the age level to know and to explore and just to build that really good foundation of knowing science, knowing the scientific principles or just how to explore things. So we, we built all of those into the experiment book. It, it becomes a cohesive <laughs> program where you are learning and exploring things all on the same topic. Science is one of those areas too that you can combine multiple kids really mm -hmm. easily. For somebody maybe that's new, do they have to do like level A, B, C, D in order or can they jump right in if their kids are in the right age range? Is it more critical or less critical with science than maybe like history, Bible, literature that you go in order? Yeah, I think it's less critical to go in order. I think um, each student, each kid will experience what they will meet what you give them. And it's not necessary to have to build on certain concepts, not like math where you have to learn addition first before you learn multiplication, you know, those kinds of things. But with scientific topics, it's really about exploring, having that, that mindset of we can learn these things and we can see what they are and play with it and experience it. So I think that students can jump in at any time that you can really, you can combine multiple levels. I think that also helps kids if the younger ones hear the older ones thinking about it or an older one has to explain it in a different way to a younger one. That just really solidifies those concepts. It really allows them to interact with what's going on and, and process it in a good way. So I think science is one of those that you really can combine kids. You can start at any point that feels good for you. You pick one in the age range of your children and you can really just develop those uh, positive attitudes towards science of discovery and learning and all of those things.